what's up what's up incredible loved and valued people i am so honored and thankful to welcome you to the have you heard podcast i am your host emma may mcdaniel and i have my incredible husband josh mcdaniel and our at this time eight week old little girl Margot mcdaniel on the podcast and we are going to be sharing Margot's birth story today and i feel like it's so timely and i pray it points you to the goodness of god so friends grab your headphones and let's have some story time. Welcome on the podcast. And I feel like we should all have like a welcome ourselves back. It's been a hot I minute. I know. Well, we've been having some awesome recordings from a lot of great people yeah. um, that we recorded pre-birth. Like in June. And so <laughs> it's been really cool to even watch those episodes and right mm-hmm. now like a heart emotions kind of going through how do we deal with heart emotions, fear, and now we're talking about a birth story which is awesome, but it didn't go exactly how how we thought it was going to go. Yeah. So I'm excited to get into it. Welcome to our home, welcome to our living room. Yeah. Um we're glad y'all are here and uh we're excited to tell you about this cuz it was a it's a God story. It's also a crazy story I, I i didn't do much i wasn't <laughs> i was just there to support but i think that's so false i think his support is so much that just needs to be made known so kick us off and how how did labor start where did it end how did it go well i feel like it's appropriate to go back a little bit and acknowledge her due date was september 2nd and i knew there was a possibility that i could have her early Mm -hmm. and so i think one of my first prayers aside from her salvation aside from her health and all the (laughs) things was god i would love to have a september baby i would love for her to be born in september because i just love fall even though it was still 80 degrees outside when it hits september 1st i feel like fall is officially here like i have full permission to decorate the house and all things fall and so that was a specific prayer leading up to her birth and also i think it's really fun because whenever you get closer to your due date we like we're starting to talk with my doctor about how okay whenever it's if we go past your due date we're gonna have to have two appointments per week but leading up to like the month before my due date i was meeting with my doctor once a week and i had my appointments every thursday and i remember my appointment with her the thursday before margo's due date so i'm like 39 weeks and five days and we sit down with her and i think it's also important to make it known of what i was really dreaming and praying for regarding the labor and the birth itself yeah. um i everybody's got their own like okay this is yeah. how i want labor to go some people are like i want my baby to be born at this time schedule it off pop an epidural on me and i'm good to go uh-huh. and some people are like i'm all natural like yeah. i don't don't touch me yeah. Like, whatever. Like, and so, yeah, what were you like? Which is awesome. Like, I mean, we are in a small group with, like, some couples our age. And there was another couple in our small group who were pregnant at the same time as us. And, like, their, like, birth plan was totally different than ours. And it was so much fun to navigate pregnancy and get ready for labor and stuff together. But my personal dream was to go into it without any medication, 100% natural. Like Mm -hmm. I wanted that so badly to labor at home as long as possible. I was planning on giving birth at a hospital, but in the low intervention room, I didn't want an epidural. I didn't want Pitocin. Like I just, I wanted to go about it so naturally. And that was something I also specifically prayed about for the whole nine months leading Mm. up to it. Like at night before bed, we would, we would read books about how to breathe through contractions. And I literally read all the way, like cover to cover a book called natural birth in a hospital. Like I was preparing as much as you could prepare. I was doing all the exercises, like trying to keep my body healthy and like intentionally mentally spiritually physically Mm -hmm. all around prepare for a natural labor and delivery so we get to my appointment on thursday 39 weeks five days pregnant and my doctor who side note is incredible i cannot speak 
highly enough about her. And she sits down knowing what my dream is, knowing what my plan is. And she's like, okay, so your due date is in two days. And it's only wise of us to have a game plan for if you don't go into labor on your own by a certain point. For the health of you and the baby, it's important for us to just have a layout of what are we going to do if things don't happen naturally in the timing that would be the healthiest. Because our top priorities were healthy mom, healthy baby. And so we walked through that game plan and I got to be honest, on our drive home after that appointment, I think it didn't hit me until that moment that, oh, it could go differently than yeah. how I've been planning it. could go how you planned. To. Yeah. It's, 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 it's hard because you do have, I mean, especially you, you had dreams and goals of like, this is how it's going to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm not like, like, this is my goal and this is the plan. But it's hard because you got to plan for the worst, but hope for the best. And yeah. Yeah. And if y'all are hearing all the sweet breathing noises, she's taking a good old nap right now. But yes, I I think there was no reason for me to be worried. But I think yeah. just the realization of, oh, this possibly could go different than how I've been dreaming and planning and praying for. It kind of, it kind of like caused me to wrestle a little bit and the next morning i woke up and i had been reading through proverbs throughout the whole month of august and that particular day i was on proverbs 16 and i was also in that time just going to the lord with what was on my heart he says cast your cares upon me because i care for you and so that's what i was doing i was like god i totally trust you with how I'm going to labor. I totally trust you with how you have ordained for my sweet baby to come into this world. Um, But I also know that you care about the dreams that I've had and you know what they are. And I pray that they could, it could go that way, but I pray that you would help me trust you if it doesn't go that way. So I open up Proverbs 16 with all of that leading up to it. And I literally read two verses that wrecked me in the best kind of way i read that those who trust in the lord are joyful yeah and that that wrecked me because i realized i knew this but in that moment i just needed that i needed to be reminded of that truth that my joy was not going to happen by things going how i dreamt my joy was not going to come by things going how i had planned or worked so hard for my joy was going to be found by trusting in god regardless of how it all unfolded and i kept reading up to the last verse of proverbs and it said a person may roll the dice but the Lord determines how they fall. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, wow, like God, I'm wanting to go into labor so badly on my own. And I'm doing everything that I can for that to happen. I'm drinking all the teas, I'm eating all the dates, Mm -hmm. I'm going on all the curb sidewalks. Any square moment that I had, I was on the exercise ball. Like I was doing everything. We had the oils going. And I was like, God, I am rolling the dice as hard as I can roll them. but. I trust that you're going to determine how they fall. Like you're going to allow this to happen in a way that brings you glory. And I surrender that this morning. So that was the day before my due date. And also that was an exciting morning because we made it to September. Mm, Yes. (laughs) Which is a big big. deal. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, Emma, you really were, you were trying so hard for it to come of a natural path. Mm -hmm. And if you can't tell, this is what we're, how we're kind of, teeing this up is our birth plan or your birth plan did not go anywhere near how we thought it was supposed to go it did not no it really did so but we made it to september yeah that's great yeah and And i i told i have to say this i remember this on the drive home before we keep going on the next day i i remember driving home with you after that doctor's appointment on thursday Mm -hmm. and i felt so worried like i was saying like i felt so worried but i think i also felt this pressure of like i have to make this happen like i have to go into labor on my own and i realized like this is such unnecessary weight because no matter how hard any woman tries like you're you're gonna go into labor when you're supposed to go into labor baby's gonna come when it needs to come and and so by me operating out of that pressure was doing nothing but robbing the joy and so i remember telling you on our drive home like i want to have fun 
Mm-hmm. Like, hold me accountable. I want to have fun whenever she comes, however she comes. I don't want these next days that are the last days before she's here, the last days of just us as a family. Yeah. I don't want it to be totally occupied with me stressing out. And so mm-hmm. that was like my commitment going into the weekend was I want to have fun. Yeah. No, I think that's really good. I think that's mm-hmm. really good. I mean, continuing on, though, it was not <laughs> and the fun the fun part was hard. <laughs> yeah. So due date comes and due, due date, date goes. goes. And so then the 3rd of September comes and goes and the 4th of September comes and goes. My parents had joked all throughout my pregnancy that we were going to go into labor on Labor Day. But Labor Day came and went. And then Tuesday, the 5th of September comes and I had my next appointment because we have two doctor's appointments now that we're past our due date. And she checked the baby just to make sure she was good. Margo was so healthy. I was so healthy. Um, Hadn't really experienced any contractions besides like a sporadic one here and there and didn't even know I was having them. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, So hadn't really experienced contractions, honestly, to an extent that I could tell. And um, did a membrane sweep, for those of you who don't know, that like apparently helps naturally start kickstart labor too so did that and that was also a fear conquering moment for me because i was so scared of how that was gonna go but we did it praise god and then tuesday night comes and i wake up in the middle of the night feeling contractions in a way i'd never felt like i was like oh that's what a contraction is it felt like i mean we're telling a birth story so i feel like this is okay to oh, yeah. share it feels like an intense period cramp is what it felt like to me what I because it was intense enough to wake me up but it wasn't painful um and I would just breathe through them and then fall back asleep and it wake me up again and I breathe through them fall back asleep and I woke up Wednesday morning so now it's September 6th and my contractions lasted all day long and they were anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes steadily yeah. all day long and they felt the way they did Tuesday night they were just like like, wow, I'm on my period type of feeling yeah. for about 10 minutes and or for about a minute long. And then 10 minutes later, it would come back for a minute. And then I would notice that I was having a hard time getting really excited, but I was having a hard time holding back my excitement too, mm-hmm. because I was like, is this it? Like, yeah, is you this don't know what, what we've been planning like. for? You yeah. Know, you, I mean, we're kind of in a limbo. So you're just like, okay, is this just kind of false labor? Is this Braxton Hicks? Is this what? Like, yeah. It, it, it is. And you don't want to get your hopes up because then it's like, oh, it didn't happen. Like, oh. Yeah. And so it, it is a waiting game, but it was, a, it was a hard waiting game with that. Yeah. I was given this advice to just remain chill, but it's so hard to stay calm whenever you're aware that you very possibly could meet your baby today tomorrow like you could meet your baby so soon and so i was so excited but i was also like okay here we go and then wednesday night so that night on the 6th i took remy out on a walk and that's when they kind of picked up they picked up around like every five minutes i was having contractions and they were getting a little bit more like (laughs) oh that didn't feel great and about an hour goes by after we get back from our walk and they're about two to three minutes apart like i'm not really being able to maintain conversation Mm -hmm. during them. One of them made me cry. Like it got a little intense. We were told to wait until three minutes and it had, it had slowly progressively got to this point. Mm -hmm. And so once it hit to that three minute mark, we're like, okay we and that lasted other. for like an hour and a half yeah and we looked at each other like okay i think this is it like yeah. i think i don't know but i the, all the books said we need to go uh-huh like um i think it's like 311 or something like that um he knows. yeah and so but like and then we finally just like all right let's head it up yeah because all the hospital bags had been packed for a week yeah <laughs> so we, we were ready yeah we texted our family threw all the bags in the in the car got the car seat in there and yeah it was 11 o'clock at night, by the way. Yeah. So, like, I had already gotten ready, ready for bed, had my retainer in, my PJs on. So, we yeah. <laughs> got ready to hop back in the car. And I text my doctor on the way. She's like, okay, I'm giving them a heads up that you're on your way. And when we got there, the contractions are now, like, one minute apart. And I'm having to kind of step away when I'm sensing them come along because they just – they were – at that level of intensity and they admit me into triage which is where they check you to see if like okay yep we need to actually take you into the labor and delivery room um and they check me and i feel like this is 
common knowledge, but I'm not going to mm-hmm. assume that. So whenever you reach 10 centimeters of dilation, then that means like you're fully you're, you're fully ready. there. Yeah. Um, and they check me and I'm at one centimeter. So we're kind of at the very start. And that was confusing, I think, yeah. because they were so, my contractions were so intense. And you had been like, because they had checked you before around like week 20 or 38 or 39 and you were one centimeter then i had been one centimeter for weeks yeah and so there was no progression but we weren't worried about it it was just Mm -hmm. like okay it'll happen when it needs to happen but it was it was defeating yeah because i had read like your dilation doesn't tell when you're gonna have the baby like you can go from one to a six in five minutes so i knew that that wasn't like concerning or i wasn't worried about it but it was just like wow, I'm tired. (laughs) Like this has been a long evening and these contractions do not feel good. Like it was to the point where they were painful and I was needing help working through them. And my dad would like bring snacks into the, to the triage room to help keep my energy up. So they were like, okay, you're at one centimeter. We're going to give you an hour and then we'll come back and see where you're at. So me, Josh and my mom are in this little room and I'm like laboring for an hour so at this point it's like 12 30 in the morning they come back in and i'm still at one centimeter and i will yeah. say i broke down <laughs> because yeah. i was i was crying because i was so tired and it's hard because they tell you to take it one at a time which is so encouraging and honestly insanely helpful but it's sometimes discouraging because you're like okay i just did that one i never have to do that one again but I don't know how many there are to come. So it's hard to Mm -hmm. endure whenever you don't know how many there are. And so they said, since you're at one centimeter, you are healthy, baby's healthy. This is not the most comfortable place that you could be. Honestly, we're going to keep your bed warm because we think that you're going to have this baby really soon. But we suggest that you go home and labor at home as long as possible in the comfort of your own space. And I asked them though, I was like, okay. I said, but we waited until yeah. all the what boxes we, were checked we for when we to come to the hospital. So what are we waiting for now? Yeah. And they were like, well, basically like you're just going to be in this zone and it's going to get more intense and you're not going to be able to talk through them. <laughs> it's going to get and worse. Like, get ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. So we go home, honestly, like just tired and excited because i'm aware like and they were like you're in labor so i was like okay i'm not questioning that anymore but i'm also just like kind of discouraged and on the way home we stopped at the gas station and josh got me some of my favorite snacks and it's like 1 30 at this point Mm -hmm. and on the way home it hit me a verse that i had read the day before from romans 15 5 and 6 where paul says May the God who gives encouragement and endurance give you the same mindset as Christ Jesus towards one another. And on the way home, I told Josh, I was like, I know what I need prayer for throughout this time. God says that he's the one who gives encouragement and endurance. And those are the two things I need really bad. I need encouragement and I need endurance. And so that became my prayer. We got home and the contractions didn't stop. Like they honestly just remained at an insanely intense level and um i was sitting actually right here in our living room on my exercise ball and it's super dark remy my dog is laying at my feet and i'm honestly in like a heavy headspace like this is really hard this is like one of if not the hardest thing i've ever done and it was in that moment just in the darkness of 4 a.m in my living room and i was like god I need you to encourage me and I really need you to help me to endure because this is insanely difficult and I really believe one of the ways that he gave me those things is I fell asleep like my contractions literally plateaued and I was able to fall asleep around 4 4 30 in the morning and I slept until like 10 that morning it was so weird it was literally like they just went on pause and I was able to rest Mm -hmm. It was such a like reset, I think. Yeah, it's because it was very defeating because you didn't know how long it was going to. It's like, is this early labor? Is this transition? Is this yeah. is the worst yet to come? All this different stuff. But yeah, it was a beautiful. It was a good rest for you. It was. Um, and that honestly, if you didn't have that, it would have made lar- labor even harder. Mm-hmm. Um, but you actually got to have some rest, and that was that was a beautiful thing for you to because the next day was 
even harder. Yeah. So <laughs> I woke up the next morning around like 10 and Josh, like I'm telling you, he says he didn't do much, but he went and got me Chick-fil-A. Like they're little things that seem so simple meant so much in their memories that I'll cherish forever. So we're sitting on our bed eating Chick-fil-A at 10 a.m. And I told Josh, I've heard that if you help like yourself visualize things, whether it be a wave crashing in or a flower opening or different things like that during a contraction, then it really helps you because you're able to like see it in a way of like each contraction is helping my baby come, which is so true and awesome. But sometimes visualizing things like it just makes my brain tired and it causes me to overthink. Like you have to find your thing, you know, but I did try that to see if it worked for me. And I tried picturing a flower opening and I told Josh, I was like, if each contraction is a petal for my flower, like I hate how many, how, <laughs> I said, I literally, sucks. <laughs> I literally said, how many petals do I have? Like, I feel like I must be a hydrangea <laughs> because I have so many petals, but it was really, really nice just to be able to like get some rest, get some food, hydrate. And I was, it's Thursday. We're supposed to have two appointments this week. So I was supposed to have an appointment that day to meet with my this doctor. This is also day two. Let, let, the record, let the record show this is day two of laboring <laughs> like you've yeah. been having contractions for two days yeah it's crazy it is crazy. It's absolutely insane and i texted my doctor to see if i needed to come in and she was like you know what based on monitoring last night at the hospital i really feel confident that you and baby are good so just rest and hydrate today she said i just rescheduled our appointment for next monday but to be honest i don't think that you're gonna need it because i think you're gonna meet your baby girl really soon which automatically sent a rush of emotions through me of excitement and fear because i was like this is this is a big deal. Like I'm about to give birth to my baby. Mm -hmm. Just the physicality of that scared me, mm -hmm. but the everything else excited me. But around probably seven o'clock yeah. on Thursday evening, yeah the contractions picked back up. So I literally got to have a day of rest and they picked back up around seven o'clock and they were about eight to 10 minutes apart. Mm -hmm. And I was really thankful because I didn't know if I was going to be able to go to sleep that night. And I did. And I woke up around one or two in the morning. So this mm. is like early Friday morning. Mm. And they were the most intense that they had been. I like was laying in bed and like just was breathing through them as best I could laying down. And then I was like, I, I can't sleep and I got to get up because a different position has got to help me through these. Mm -hmm. And so I, I literally have a selfie of me in our staircase because from probably two to three, I was just in our stairwell breathing through contractions because I had watched a reel on Thursday of like ways to labor in your stairwell, believe it or not. Not ways to labor in your stairwell, but like how it helps you position the baby. It's not like you have to labor in the stairwell, but you it helps you position the baby, right? Yeah, but it was ways, like uh, like different positions, like lunges and squats. <laughs> that just makes it sound like it's like you have to labor in your stairwell. Oh, like you're no. forced to labor in your stairwell. <laughs> no, 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 okay. no. It helped me know like different positions to do because believe it or not, it made it feel a little different yeah. and so i like had worship music going and i'm just breathing through them and i'm like wow okay here we go i just did that one never have to do that one again god you're helping me you're giving me encouragement and endurance so about an hour of being in the stairwell i was like okay these are about five <clears throat> minutes apart yeah. three to five minutes Getting apart closer. and they've been steady like that for about an hour so i went and woke up josh i was like hey i just want you to know where we're at i'm doing good yeah. But I just wanted to let you know. I was snoozing. I was having a great, <laughs> I was having a great time. <laughs> yeah, and around three thirty, I've been like making my way all throughout the house, like trying to change positions, trying to keep moving, just in prayer and worship, breathing through them. And I'm in one in the bathroom, and Josh and Remy come into the bathroom door, and they're like, "How's it going?" <laughs> and I was like, "It's going. It's. I mean, it's going good. It's." I guess it's going good because you've never, I mean, when you've never done it before, you're like, okay, like you, this is the first time. So everything you're experiencing, it's like, yeah. this is how it's going. And so Josh was helping me through all of them. And I remember it was probably 3.30 or 4.00. And I went into the shower because hot water also helps like relieve it. And it was one of the sweetest moments ever that I forever have a picture of it in my head. 
Remy was laying on one bath mat and Josh was laying on the other bath mat with like a towel as his pillow wrapped up in a blanket. He had my <laughs> phone next to his head where worship music was going and he had the timer because we were timing our contractions. And so I would let him know when one was coming. And so he would start it and then he would just encourage me through it. He'd be like, okay, okay, worst part's coming. <laughs> worst part just happened. It's over. It's only getting better from here. You just did it, Emma. You never have to do that one again. Like, And he was just helping me through each one and now it's like six in the morning on yeah. friday it just kept on going it kept on going and it was only like it, it was staying close together like it was yeah. very consistent and the intensity was just growing and so i sent a screenshot of my contractions to my doctor and she was like i think that you should come in but i looked at josh and i was like i do not want to like manage myself to get in a car mm -hmm. <laughs> and drive how because that was so uncomfortable and then yeah, be we told to to we have to yeah to be told that you're at a two <laughs> and have to come back home i just did not want that i was trying yeah. so hard to labor at home as long as i could and so we stayed at home until fast forward it's now 11 o'clock early late morning early afternoon on friday yeah. I called and your mom because I was. We needed you to have some electrolytes. You were getting really tired, uh -huh. and so we had her bring over some Gatorade. Yeah. I mean, as soon as she walked in the door, she was like, "This is a, a battle scene in here." <laughs> I had just finished going through a contraction. I was on the flick. I was on all fours on the floor, just breathing through it, and it like. It was an experience I had never felt in my life. My mom walks in. And she was like, "Um." It may be time, guys. And so my doctor, Josh calls my doctor mm -hmm. and is like, hey, this is where we're at. This is why we don't want to go to the hospital. Yeah. And she was like, okay, makes so much sense. Why don't y'all just come to my office? I'll check you there. And based on where you're at, we'll go to the hospital or not. Mm -hmm. And I was so thankful. So I hop in the car with my mom. Josh hops in the car with the car seat and the, ho and the hospital bags. And we get to the office of my doctor. And I... I think that this is like, I don't know. It's just a, those scenes that you have in your head. You're just yeah. like, I'm never going to forget this. I'm like having to buckle down through a contraction right outside of the office door. And then after it's over, we make our way in. And my doctor said that the moment she walked into our room, she said, I knew you were about to have your baby just by looking at your face. Like I knew that this was about to happen. And she checks me. Now, just to kind of set the scene of where my head space was at, I was like, okay, I really hope that I am much more further along. Yeah. Like, like because a five or six. Or I something. really hope because this is so hard and this has been so long but i had also set an expectation in my head of you know what she very well could tell me i'm at a two and if she does it's okay like i didn't want to build it up in my head and then like be brought down so i was like if she says i'm a two it's okay and she checks me and she's like emma you're at an eight you need to go to the hospital right now yeah and as she walked out the door i I lost it mm -hmm. I because I was so exhausted I was so relieved because in my head the way that labor is like broken down you've got early labor then you've got active labor then you've got transition which is like right before baby is coming yeah and so all this time I was like I very well still could be in early labor and if this is early labor and it's supposed to get more intense how much more intense is this going to get? Like, I'm trying to share words with you sure. guys to describe what I'm, what the feelings were, but I, it's hard to find yeah. the words to describe how it physically felt. But in that moment, I was just so relieved because I was like, we're almost there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we labored at home as long as we possibly could. Yeah. And so we hop in the car head to the hospital i was so Speed thankful for every green light because <laughs> we couldn't get there fast enough and contractions are about one to two minutes apart and we walk into the hospital and this lady comes in from labor and delivery with a wheelchair oh yeah and the <laughs> i've never seen thing, emma like uh, so like founded and no i'm not doing this i was so <laughs> matter of fact and bold i had never met this woman in my life but she comes down with a wheelchair and i i said please don't make me sit in this wheelchair 
And it's she's, a lot more like polite sounding than, <laughs> than, than it was. was. <laughs> and she said, ma'am, I'm so sorry, but it's policy that you have to. And I, I start crying. Like tears start yeah. streaming down my face. I said, ma'am, please don't make me sit in this wheelchair. Yeah. And she was like, oh, okay. She said, just don't have the baby in the elevator. And I typically that would have been a ha ha. Like, that's so funny. But I was like. I was in another world. Like I was just so focused because yeah. the contractions were so intense and they were there was only so much space between each one at this point. And so I was just in another realm where I was mm. just like I wasn't there to laugh. I I, I wanted to, but I was just no. so focused on like this baby's about to come and I'm experiencing physical, emotional and mental like spaces that I've never felt before in my life. So we make our way up to um, the labor and delivery room where they check me and I'm at like an eight or a nine Which at you, this point. This is this is a story that I don't even know we were going to tell, but I think we need to tell it because this is hilarious. <laughs> so we get into the room and they're checking you. And uh, yeah. of course, if, if, if you've ever had a baby, you know, it's very uh, revealing. Of, <laughs> very, uh, vulnerable. very vulnerable. Very <laughs> vulnerable. Yes. And so it's me, your mom and I, and the nurse. And you are just on the table, like sprawled out. And they're checking you. And as soon as they like start to check you, and of course it's very uncomfortable and it's like you're going through a tr oh. contraction, your grandma just walks <laughs> right into the room. Like they apparently she just arrived at the hospital and was like, Where's where's the McDaniels? And then she just walked right in the room and we had a <laughs> scurry her on out of it but My that was, mom was so, like mom mom that was so funny that was it like was so it wasn't funny, funny at the time because of course like you're watching your wife going through labor and that's just a sight in and of itself but like oh that was that was like your grandma just walking in on the room so funny but, yeah. because it was just that she walked in the room like there was a it wasn't a door separating us from her it was a curtain and the curtain like was totally like covered from one point down but then from another point up it was just this sheer so you could see through the curtain and so it was just so funny because all of a sudden i just see my grandma's head like poke around the curtain Gosh. she blushed her heart she felt so bad because they just told her that we were they just pointed we were this way <laughs> yeah, i'm not sure so how she just secure. went the direction that she was told to go she felt so bad but also before we keep going like you just made a comment that like it was really hard to watch me be in labor. Mm -hmm. How are you doing during this whole time? Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 something that it's hard to describe because you know I know that your body is made to do this mm -hmm. and that you can do this, but it doesn't make it easy. Right. And it's hard to see you in such pain that there's nothing I can do about. Um and it's it's like laying in the bathroom floor. It's like all the only thing I can really do is time the contractions, pick up Chick Fil A, and tell you that you're doing a good job for the hundred and fiftieth time because you're doing a good job. Yeah. So it's it, it is, but it, it is difficult in the sense because you can't fix the situation and you can't take away the pain. And that's the type of uh, that's that's who I am. I, I want to fix it. If there's a problem, I'll fix it. I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it done. It'll be done efficient and fast. Um, but yeah, I think it was a, it was a different area of trust in God mm -hmm. that He's taking care of you, that your body can do it, and that also just letting you go on that journey of of birth, yeah, which is not an easy one, but a uh, it's a journey for sure. Yeah. And, oh, what was I going to say? There was a something I was going to say. Oh, I remember. So, also, I want to take note, at this point, I've gone into labor naturally. You finally did. This was, like, this was something that I prayed for. Yeah. And something that I wanted so badly a week before this point, the Friday before Mario's due date, yeah. that I was reading Proverbs and saying, okay, God, I surrender going into labor to you. Like, I've rolled the dice, you determine how they fall. My mm -hmm. joy is not found in in how I go into labor, but my joy is found in trusting in you, however yeah. it unfolds. So at this point, I'm like, oh, we did it. Like, yeah. we went into labor on our own. Like, thank you, God. You didn't have to answer my prayer in that way, but you did, and that's so kind of you. So. 
But yet the story doesn't end there. It, yeah. So, <laughs> but I wanted to acknowledge that that was like a big yeah. deal that I was just so grateful for because I had, even though it was like the hardest thing I've ever done, it was a dream that I had, which is so funny that mm. you can hold both of those things. Yeah. Also, something I wanted to acknowledge that I thought was really cool and honestly held such a message in my preparation for whatever labor was going to look like. I had read in books over and over and over again that if you operate out of fear during contractions and during labor, it will physically cause your body to tense up, which will make your contractions painful. It will make them like more painful. But if you surrender, letting your body do what it's needing to do, letting your uterus contract, because with every contraction, it's getting your baby ready to come into the world. If you surrender it, it actually eases the pain. Like it doesn't change the intensity and every woman's labor is different. Like I surrendered to the contractions and breathed through them as best as I knew how, but I would be lying to you if I said it was not painful. (laughs) (laughs) But but I just thought that was so powerful. The whole idea of fear brings tension and pain and surrender brings ease. And so I just pray whoever's listening to this that needed that, like I feel like that's such a theme throughout my story of yeah. like, don't operate through this out of fear of it not going a certain way. Don't operate out of this out of fear of not knowing what more is coming. Operate out of this out of trust in me, Emma of the Lord saying like surrender to me and so that was something I was carrying with me too but so they check me I'm at like eight or nine my sweet Mimi has come in and my mom showed her where the (laughs) waiting room was I love her so much and now we are officially in the low intervention labor room and it's honestly like a matter of time at this point it's like what 1 30 p.m on Friday now (laughs) and we're just like we're laboring the the contractions are the most intense but it was really sweet because i actually had like some brief moments in the Mm -hmm. middle where we were laughing and i was eating granola bars and we were i was just walking around the room and peeing every 10 seconds and (laughs) it but it was like okay here we go and so the doctors told me whenever you feel like you have to poop let us know because i mean if you never had a baby you never know like what needing to push Mm, feels like um and so i was like okay i kind of feel like i need to poop and so my mom went and got the doctors they came back and checked me and then they checked me again and then they they checked me again yeah they stepped out of the room they talked come back in they have another person check they go back out and talk and then come back in and had another doctor would check which was so hard because cervical checks, I think, are one of my least favorite things ever, ever. But they checked me and checked me and checked me. And then they're talking amongst themselves. And again, my doctor knows what I've been dreaming of. Like this whole plan that I've had of labor and delivery naturally. And she comes back into the hospital room. At this point, it's like 3.15 in the afternoon. So this yeah. a long time has gone by of just contracting and laboring. And she looks at me with the most compassion in her eyes. And she said, I love you. And I feel responsible for the health of you and your baby. Mm -hmm. And because I'm responsible for the health of you and your baby, I need to let you know that your pelvic floor is too narrow. And because of the structure of your pelvic floor, your baby is not going to be able to come vaginally. If she were able to come vaginally, then she would have already come. And so when she said that, dots were connecting really, really fast in my head. And I realized I'm about to have to have a C-section. Yeah. That was a that was a hard moment. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. We literally, we sat there for a second and just well, listened to, of course, continue for the doctor to speak and kind of what would happen. But uh, we just asked everybody to leave the room because you know, it wasn't yeah. the plan. And me and Josh, we we wept. Like, we cried so hard together mm-hmm. and held hands and prayed. And you encouraged me so much. And I, I felt so done at this point because I was just so tired. I was so tired. And so I was so overwhelmed with emotions because on top of just exhaustion, I was so, like, 
uncomfortable because contractions are not <laughs> yeah. as we've established but also you have what's called the labor shakes and so i'm also sitting there shaking without being able to control it oh my it. goodness y'all so, you shook you, sh- you shook so you shook you shook so much and like, like my mind really honestly bad. was calm like yeah. like if i were able to say body calm down like i would have been able to say that but yeah. i like i was just so i'm in pain in the contractions i'm so exhausted yeah. i'm shaking like a squirrel like i'm like just lose like my body's just Squirrel shake? I guess. <laughs> okay. And then on top of that, I'm so excited to meet our baby girl. But then on top of that, I'm terrified because now I'm about to go into surgery. Yeah. And I, besides getting my wisdom teeth pulled, I've never had a surgery. And now I'm about to have like a major surgery. Yeah. And so I was so scared. And it was really, it was really powerful though because my doctor, she said, like she said, there is this is not because of a lack of willpower, Emma. She said. You have done everything you possibly could have done for this baby to come vaginally. And Labored for three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she said it just simply wasn't in the cards. And when she said that, I had a flashback to last Friday morning, sitting in Proverbs 16, that a person may roll the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. And mm-hmm. I just thought, wow. I thought in that moment God was preparing me for maybe not going into labor the way I dreamt. But really, he was he was preparing my heart and strengthening my trust in him and filling me with joy by his presence for this moment that this is not going to go how i planned but he's still here he's still good and it's going to bring him glory because Mm -hmm. that's the only thing that he does is he does what is good and brings him glory and and so they brought in the anesthesiologist and my doctor was so so sweet because my doctor has two baby girls and she gave birth to them both via c-section and my yeah. doctor so badly wanted this to be the best experience we could have had especially knowing everything we had been going through the last days and things not going at all how we had thought they were going to go and she said so this is the girl she brings in the anesthesiologist she said this is the girl who gave me my anesthesia for my c-sections and i trust her with everything in me and i mean she is the sweetest mm-hmm. lady like she was just so friendly she made me feel so safe and at the same time i'm still feeling everything i just told you i'm feeling (laughs) like there is so much going on in this moment and so they start taking me back to the operation room which was also really hard because my mom and josh couldn't come back there with me to get ready and everything they're getting their scrubs on and i'm having to get my spinal and all the doctors and the surgeon like they were all so so kind to me but i was kind of like how i was in the wheelchair moment i was just like out of it and like it was like i was there but i wasn't there like i was numb is the feeling that i felt numb and afraid (laughs) that's how i felt which sounds terrible and i honestly had to grieve that because not grieve it i think i had to like process it Mm -hmm. because i always thought that like the feelings i would have right before my little girl is born are like so excited and i like am like so celebratory which of course those things were in my heart i felt those things but those weren't the feelings i had at the forefront of my mind like i'm about to go into surgery and i'm so tired and this is not at all how i thought it was gonna go and i'm so scared and like there's so many things that you're feeling and so they sit me down they're doing the spinal and which was also so scary, but they did a great job. And <laughs> my look in the eyes of my doctor, I was like, I said, I'm so done. I'm so tired. And she looked at me and she said, it is so wild, the things that we will do for our babies. And it was such a moment of also like just total sacrifice. Like I'm like, I am outside of my comfort zone, even in the midst of being afraid, even in the midst of exhaustion, like I'm about to meet my baby girl Mm -hmm. and I trust God. And so it was like I was feeling all of these things that were so loud and heavy and present. But deep down at the foundation of it all, I had so much joy and so much peace and so much gratitude, which was insane that you can simultaneously experience those things. Like 
it was so worth it. (laughs) Even though it was so chaotic, it was so worth it. And honestly, in control. Mm -hmm. And so- It was really cool though, because once we heard the news at the C-section, I went over and pulled the doctor aside. I was like, okay, we gotta make this as best as possible. And she was so sweet because usually whenever you have a C-section, you're only allowed to bring in one person, which is Mm -hmm. usually the husband. Um, But she allowed uh, your mom to come in too. Yeah. And be a part of that, which is really cool because we actually got to capture a lot of photos Mm -hmm. um, of the moment and of the the C-section and birth. Um, And then we also got to blast worship music during the season yeah um and so there was there was a really there was just some really cool moments and especially just one song in particular Mm -hmm. that just continued to play on repeat yeah it was it's to this day one of my favorites it's by kingdom culture how good the lord is so it's just declaring like i can't believe how good the lord is and i cannot help but bring him praise when i remember who he is and give him thanks when i remember what he's done and i will tell these stories of his goodness to my kids like that's literally a quote in the song and it's blaring and i'm laying there and they're telling me like oh okay like we're cutting can you feel it and i was like no like which was insane Mm -hmm. like the ability that we have in just the medical like like they're literally what they were doing and the fact that i couldn't feel it is mind-boggling to me but they said that they they pulled margo out and it was like a suction sound when they pulled Mm -hmm. her out because she was trying so hard she was a cone to come out she had a cone head she was kind of fit because they, they literally said, Emma, you could try to give birth vaginally right now, but it is extremely high in possibility that we are going to have to have an emergency C-section and Margot's life will be at risk. And so it was a no-brainer, like, yes, let's go into a C-section right now where she will be safe. But it was so clear, like, she was trying yeah. so hard to come out. And they were like, your uterus was so fatigued because you've been laboring for so many hours. And so they take me into um, post-operation room. But as they're taking me there, I... I just, I don't know. I was just thinking about how cool God is and the fact that he answers our prayers so faithfully, Mm -hmm. but not always how we thought that he would. Because the woman who gave me the anesthesia, she was in tears as they delivered Mm -hmm. Margot. And as Margot was on my chest and I got to kiss her foot and me and Josh were just like, we were just in the moment. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she was in tears and worship music was blaring, I thought back to, countless prayers i had prayed nine months leading up to this that god i pray your glory would be made known in margo's birth and i pray that people the surgeons the nurses the doctors everybody in the room when margo's born would be able to taste and see how good you are Mm -hmm. and so to hear a song going i can't believe how good the lord is and the anesthesiologist in tears knowing what we've gone through having gotten to meet her i was like god you're making your goodness known. This is not how I thought you were gonna do it, (laughs) but you're doing it. And I literally that like fast forward, there's so much that happened in the post-op and everything, but fast forward to that night and Josh is asleep, baby's asleep, it's in between feeds. And I'm just laying there awake like, what just happened? Mm I have a precious, healthy, beautiful baby girl to my left, and I have an incredible, supportive, just dream of a husband to my right. And I feel like I have so much I could write about right now (laughs) because what just happened? Yeah. It's a beautiful God story. It is. And that's our birth story. Yeah. Yeah. So I really, I think my biggest prayer for those of you listening is whatever season you're in whether you're about to have a baby or not you will never regret surrendering your plans to the lord Mm -hmm. and i'd want to emphasize the point to you that your joy is found not in something going how you thought that it would but your joy is found through trusting in the lord who's carrying you through and he is sovereign and he's in control so even when it feels chaotic it's actually in order whenever you're abiding in him Mm -hmm. and and I, I do. I just pray you're able to taste and see the goodness of the Lord through us mm-hmm. sharing this story. And I hope that you'll have mm-hmm. an incredible rest of your day. And I thank you for for just being so awesome that we could share this with you. Mm-hmm. It felt timely to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you. See y'all next week. Yeah. I think next week we're gonna try to talk about postpartum. Whoop, whoop. Ooh, all the all the opinions of people up in the postpartum. <laughs> <laughs> Love See you guys. Y'all.